It all had to come to an end at some point. Hill River 3, the 2020 novel by Cameron Robique. This is the final, hopefully, installment in the Kill River Trilogy. I was so torn by the end of this book, I don't think I could take any more. I just get so sad if any of these characters that are left die. It's Author Appreciation Week, and I'm putting the spotlight on Cameron Robeek. I've reviewed all of his other books and plan to have the interview up. Yeah, let's just dive into <laughs> this novel, which uh, is huge. The plot, still taking place in 1984, Cindy and Johnny are in love. Deep love. And, uh, well, after Johnny leaves after a night of fun. Cindy is captured and is taken away to Thrill River. Meanwhile, Johnny's sister Christy, who was established as being a character in the second book, is driving along with her non-licensed having friend, who's the brother of her other friends, and who has a friend. They're all driving up to Thrill River. Hell awaits them. This is a book of loss, revenge, followed by more loss. If you have read these books in order in a short span of time like I did, you'll want to cry by the end. I know I did. Thankfully, I've read on my Kindle or else my book would have got soaked. I will try to steer away from spoilers as much as possible, much like I did and said I would in my review for Kill River 2. The characters. I'm already getting choked up and I finished reading this book a few days ago. Cindy is going through hell as if she hasn't been through enough already. By the end of this book, you will feel utter sadness, not only for her, but for everyone who's still alive and was involved. Johnny is pretty oblivious throughout most of the book. He has a bad feeling about what's going on. Christy is learning a whole lot more about Cindy and Johnny's experience through her own experience. Kent Carver is as evil as ever. I hated his character, but not as much as some other bad guys in this book, including the killer. The killer is misunderstood in a bit, but at the same time, he is not right in the head. Other characters, we have Don and Nina, who are Christie's best friends, and who also have a brother named TJ, who is kind of a jerk. He uh, has a band. Well, he has one other guitarist named Rodney, and uh, both of them get involved in the Thrill River horror. I liked the new characters, however, they feel like they are just Stacy, Brad, and Zach from the first novel, except for with one extra character. That works and it doesn't. It, it works because it adds extra and gruesome deaths, but it also doesn't because it really serves no purpose in the end. The only thing it really serves is to fill Christy in on the events that happened prior, and she doesn't really do too much. Which is a detriment to that, because if she had done more, she'd be more relevant. While this does not have a huge body count, this time it was not to my dismay. At first I thought it should have one, but by the end I was satisfied. I felt that it wrapped everything up and I do not want a sequel, because I don't think I could take it. <laughs> not in a negative way, it's actually more of a positive. Well done, Robique. This is also Cameron Robique's longest book to date coming in at a whopping 362 pages. The pacing is brisk yet again, as with all Cameron Robique's books. And even though I did not want it to end, I kind of did. I wanted there to be more closure, maybe a different ending, because I was just so sad. The gore! We get a bloody spray from an air hose being shoved down someone's throat that means stabbed in the chest and the blood just sprays out. That was inventive. There's a brutal hooking 
a few nasty and shocking stabbings into some disturbingly ghastly descriptions of dead bodies. It's got some good stuff, not a ton, but enough. The music, we have the Go-Go's, of course. Twisted Sister, which was awesome. Billy Idol, Bananarama. It's got a lot of the same, but a lot of new stuff too. Much like in the previous installment. Overall, how do I feel about this book? The feels, man. That's what this book preys on. Not only for an 80s nostalgia, but the feeling you have with the story and its characters. I hope it stays a fun and intense trilogy. Let the survivors live the rest of their lives happy with what they have left. I read Kill River 1 to 3 from June 1st to June 25th. What a fantastic way to spend the summer. I know summer is not only in June, but you get what I'm trying to say. Overall, I give Kill River 3 a... I was going to give it a 3 out of 5, but I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. I let you have a little bonus. You're welcome. Thank you all for watching, and I am Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong and I'd greatly appreciate it. It'll also give you access to body counts and to music videos that you cannot get on YouTube because of age and copyright restriction. Also hit that notification bell and as always, subscribe!